You've probably heard the terms Flexbox and CSS Grid and thought to yourself, <laughs> that has nothing to do with me. I'm a designer, which couldn't be more wrong because these two technologies are really at the end of the day, layout tools. And as web designers, we have to understand that our designs are eventually going to become functioning websites. And so in today's episode, I'm gonna teach you the differences between Flexbox, CSS Grid, how you can start thinking about these layout tools, implementing them in some really cool design tools, and even build them out in some no code tools so that you become a master of web design. Now, the first thing I want to do is show you how Flexbox and CSS Grid are used on the web. And to do that, I'm going to kick over to my browser and I'm going to open up any website. I have the Phosphor Icons website, which is a really cool icon pack that I've been using lately. And I'm going to actually open up what we call the developer tools. Now, if you are not accustomed to opening up the dev tools, I'm going to go ahead and hit Command Option I to open up the developer tools, or we can always go up to View, head over to developer here and somewhere in there you're going to find the developer tools and as we do this i'm going to grab my little picker or selector and i'm going to grab an area of this website like right here these two buttons that are kind of stacked side by side from each other and when i select those you'll see in the top right hand corner we are using display flex and we are wrapping that's a layout tool that the developer of this website has chosen to use and if I was to turn those off and on, I could potentially change the layout that's happening here in real time. But just to show you here that you can actually search the web and figure out how they're actually laying things out. Is that in Flex or is it in Grid? Another example of this is I'm going to kick over to Mozilla Firefox in this case. I think they have a little bit better developer tools to analyze CSS Grid. And what I do and I inspect this actual kind of like icon grid, you can see here that this one instead is using CSS grid. You can see it is in fact uh, called grid container and that grid just like this is saying display grid and we have some tools over here that allow us to turn some things off and on. One of the things that I'm turning off and on is the actual grid lines happening right over here. We can see that it's not just going to flex things together and try to drop them in a row or a column. I get this whole grid of activity marked from one, two, three, all the way up to seven. And now we have rows and we have columns. This is gonna allow us to start dictating things inside of those rows and columns. So just a fun thing you should probably get used to as a web designer is opening up dev tools, inspecting, and seeing how the web is laid out. Now, as we started to see all those different layouts on the web, I have one great definition that I found for us from Mozilla's developer website, and it says this. The difference, the basic difference between CSS grid layout and Flexbox is that Flexbox was designed for layout in one dimension. That means either rows or columns, not both. We're either going to make a row of something and stack them left to right or right to left, or we're going to make columns and stack them top to bottom or bottom to top. Whereas, on the other hand, Grid was designed for two-dimensional layout, rows and columns at the same time. That's the big major differentiator between Flexbox and Grid. Another way that you can think about this is that Flexbox is very focused on the content and Grid is very focused on the actual layout itself or honoring the layout or honoring the content. You're going to see this play out right now because I'm going to open up PenPot and PenPot is actually a great tool because they just released their layout tool of CSS Grid. They have Flexbox capabilities and CSS Grid. So PenPot really tries to reflect the web as much as possible. And this isn't a sponsored video. You could just go check out PenPot because it's an open source free platform. But you can see we have two artboards here with layouts inside. One of them is called Flex and the other one is called Grid. And you can see as I open up Flex here and go look on the right hand side, this is using a Flex layout and we have a certain amount of controls that were being given on this right hand side. But if I click over to grid, I'm going to get a totally different set of controls because these are different layout tools. But let's talk a little bit about the differences as we start to edit some of these kind of like settings over here in PenPot. Let's start with our grid settings or excuse me, our Flexbox settings. So I'm going to open up my or tap on my Flexbox kind of uh, artboard here and you can see that currently we are set to kind of display or flex our items in a row it says from left to right if i was to click this other one we would shift the direction of all the elements or the children 
inside of this parent container to go the other way. We can also, instead of going from left to right or in a row, we can also go into a column. And you can see we can click here down, and that's gonna move all of these into a column. Why don't we actually grab our artboard here and just make sure that it flexes and ebbs and flows to kind of contain all of our information. We can also go from bottom to top, top to bottom, again, back to left to right, and right to left. And this is the power of Flexbox, one-dimensional rows, or columns. You can see how effective this can be if I need to lay out a row of cards, just like I've done here. But then as soon as I get something like into a mobile version, let's say I was creating a mobile version of this, I would want to lay this out from top to bottom, right? And then maybe for some reason, like when the user does something a little bit differently, all I have to do to shift the order of these things around by sorting the cards or in, in whatever way, is to move them from bottom to top. You see how great and easy this is for layout. But one thing that Flexbox is never going to allow us to do is to create really complex grid-based layouts like masonry grids or bento cards. So let's dive back in and take a look at some of the options that are here in our grid layout, things we would never be able to do in Flexbox. So for instance, we can grab our grid here and we can hit our edit grid button and that's going to open up all of those different grid options, boxes moving from, or excuse me, our grid cells moving from one to two and two to three. Now, for instance, if I, if I take a look at this grid, I have one big column here and, or excuse me, one big row and seven columns. I could see that down the right hand side. And I could, for instance, open those up and why don't we add another row? Look, I have a whole another grid structure row down below and I can open, open up my columns. Why don't we start removing some of these columns? You can see that all of these are using fractional units. We could hard code those if we want, but right now the fractional unit is saying, hey, just always divide whatever this area is up precisely, perfectly for us, which is really, really nice. So we can jump back in and see now we have a three column and a two row layout. Now we can add a little bit more space here in between our cards, something like 30 and 30. These are our gaps in between and it's doing the math for us, which is really, really nice. And no matter how we ebb and flow and stretch this, it's going to try to honor the layout as much as possible. Now, with all that being said, we can also do some really interesting things. We can grab our grid, and for instance, all of this is very representational of code, by the way. We can say, I wanna grab this first grid cell area right here, and I want this grid cell area to, we're manually controlling it, to not go from one to two, but maybe I want it to go from one to three. Now, all of a sudden, I have expanded my grid here, and I've created a whole new column and we could simply grab this element right here and just zoom out a little bit. Why don't we grab the contents inside like this and just make it stretch so it fills the space. Uh, I could do the same thing if I was to come in and grab my grid. Let's do this one more time as well. I could grab this, this little grid cell and make it expand downward here. So for instance, we can have this go all the way down. And again, we're gonna be done here. Let's grab this element and make sure that it's going to span the distance. Now we can start building in two dimensions. That means we can build in rows, we can build in columns, and this is something you could never do using simple Flexbox. One dimensional, left to right, top to bottom. This one gives us all sorts of options. So it's important to understand which tool is the right tool for the job either using Flexbox or using something like CSS Grid. We're gonna dive in now and take a look at building out some of these in a no-code tool like Wix Studio. I have this fun website I've been working on in Wix Studio, and you can see it's using a lot of different layout tools like Flexbox and CSS Grid. So why don't we dive in and we'll add a new section and build some from scratch. I have my website, I'm gonna scroll down to find a good spot. I'm gonna select this entire section and we're gonna add a new section underneath it, just like that. We have a blank section. Now what I can do is I could start to use some of these pre-built grid layout tools that we have here, or I could just paste an element in that I've been working with, maybe something like that. And let's do another one, just paste it right on top. Maybe I could move that over to the side here. And why don't we just update the color here to be green so we have some fun kind of like layout that's happening. Now, when I grab both of these cards, you're gonna see that Wix Studio asked me to, or asked me if I'd like to, implement what's called a stack. And as soon as I click stack, 
we've basically implemented CSS Flexbox. So it's asking us, hey, do you want to stack these right from left to right horizontal? Or do you want to stack these from top to bottom vertical? We are now using Flexbox layout technology. And this can be very, very helpful. You'll notice inside each of my boxes here, I'm actually already using stacks. And that allows me to Again, do the same thing, move things around, space everything out consistently inside of it simply by using that Flexbox technology. Now, what if instead I want to create a new section and I want to use CSS grid? I could start out with a really basic grid, like a two column grid that's happening here. And we could grab our individual elements and pop them inside of our grid, no problem. But what if we want to make our grid a little bit more complex? We can do that. Notice when I click on a grid cell like we have here, we get some options. Do I want to split horizontally? Maybe I want to split it vertically. Why don't we split it horizontally like so? That's going to now make our grid a little bit more complex. Notice that we can grab it again. Why don't we split it this way? And now we're doing some really cool things here inside and it's expanding my grid out, which is my, my box, which is pretty nice. So why don't I just get inside here and I'm going to just fill the size of it by hitting the top there. And maybe we want to just shrink down our button. We could do that and we can build some really cool layouts here, but notice the difference, how simple it is to instead of trying to drag things around and position them perfectly, instead we can just implement something like flex or CSS grid and get really, dialed in structures and you can notice that the thing that I've built here on top will give you a really good indicator of how simple it is. Here I have a nice section grid and I've broken that grid in, and I'm using grid areas to do some more complex things, a little bit more asymmetrical and then we have a grid piece here that's broken into two and then another grid box on the side. So this is a really, really cool way to build interesting and unique you know, layouts. Notice here that I've broken this grid up into something really similar. I'm leaving some grid structures empty on purpose so that I get this kind of fun asymmetrical look and feel while keeping everything really, really responsive. And it's going to respect the layout 100% of the time. And that is how simple it is to apply these layout techniques into a no-code tool, something like Wix Studio. Well, that's it. Those are the differences and the power of CSS Grid versus Flexbox layout technology. Let me know if you have any questions down in the comments and in the description, I'll leave a bunch of links for follow-up resources where you can learn more about how to implement CSS Grid and Flexbox technologies, links to all the applications that I use, including PenPot and Wix Studio. I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to leave a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel so you know when more web design content comes out. And if you're looking for more content, definitely check out this video or this video, and we'll see you in the next one.